Shabbat right. shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Glory, glory, glory. You know, it's not by chance that today is Saturday, the Sabbath day, the skies of the heavens are open. It's the 77th episode of the Hebrew congregation. 77, what? That's a spiritual number, right? And, and it's this pagan holiday, Christmas. Oh, yeah. And guess what? And I'm my fifth day into COVID and look at me. But God, but God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Ari. I should. The devil's a liar. And it's not because I'm somebody special. It's not because I don't sin. It's not because I've done anything that's so great. It's because I put my trust in him. Who report you going to believe? You going to believe uh, Dr. Fossey report or you going to believe Yahshua report? Okay. There's people right now at the table that's suffering right now. They, they, they got all these gifts and they're broke right now and they get receiving gifts, but they feel empty right now. It's his, if, it, if y'all saying it's his birthday, why are everybody giving gifts to everybody else? Okay, some people have logged on today. Don't get it twisted to see if I'm dead or gone. Some people logged on today to see if I'm doing good. But I got a gift for y'all. Yahweh got a gift for y'all today. And these are gifts that you can't buy. Yahweh loves you. He's our Prince of Peace. He has fixed me. He has healed me. Thank you. And, and you know, I looked, I strolled down my thing and there's people who's dying. I've had friends who died. There's people that's missing at the table right now, that's dead right now, but God. Only he can heal that peace, that, 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 that thing that's in your stomach right now that makes you want to throw up. Oh yeah, I'm about, I'm about to pray right now. Y'all come to see me. Y'all gonna see something. He got a gift for y'all today. If you feeling lonely right now, God, your Prince of Peace, our Yahshua and our Yahweh, he will, he will fill that void right now. If you couldn't buy gifts and you feeling empty right now because you are broke, God, he has a gift right now. We send out the cancer in my household right now. I rebuke it in the name of Yahshua. I take it off of my husband and I take it off of my, my brother-in-law right now. In Yahshua name, I declare the skies of the heaven are open right now. I shut the devil's mouth right now that tried to mock God that Easter going to die. There's people who got online that said, you a Christian, don't be scared. Fear never entered me. It never entered me. Because be the absent body would be present with him, right? So I can't be over here preaching to be scared of death. If I was gone today, trust and believe I would have been in a better place. I'm handling you right now, devil. You can shut up and you can go back to the pits of hell. But there's order in the house. There's instructions in the house. God had already given me an instruction to get on my treadmill. Don't lay down on it. I didn't lay down on it. I did what he told me to do. God is a faithful God. If somebody at your table's not there today, they're in a better place. You may not like it, but there's a time and a date for everybody. There's a time and a date. Love, we lift your name on high, Lord. Yahweh, you're the king of the king. You're the lords of the Lord. We thank you. Where my patience are thin, you will make me strong. Where I am weak, you will build me up. When I am destitute, you will come and see about me. You are the bread on my table. You are the blood. I preach the blood of Jesus right now in your household. I rebuke any spirit that is not of the Lord out of your household right now. Sickness is not of your house of the Lord. We would send it out right now in the name of Yahshua. A liar is not in your household. We send that liar out. A thief is not in your household. We send the thieves out right now. You come to see Easter, here she is right now, the picture of life. Yahshua, Yahweh is using me. We thank you, Lord, because I am nothing. But in everything, he loves me. I, he loves me. He can use me. I allow him to. Whoo, it's down in my belly right now today. If you want some healing, touch the screen right now. I dare you to. There's healing in the atmosphere. This is the Sabbath day. Everything has stopped. You don't have to work today. Oh, Lord, but God. Thank you. Happiness in my spirit and my bones. Thank you, Lord. Hey, 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 thank you. 
Touch the screen right now. Say, I trust you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I want your gifts that man can't give me. Man can't give me peace. Man can't give me that agape kind of love. Man can't give me my salvation. Man can't take this fear out of my body. You want to hide in the house? You're going to get COVID. It's just a matter of time unless you hide. And what quality of life is that? Trust God. Trust him. And if it's your time and it's your day, it's your time and it's your day. Thank you, Lord. Healing on the land. Even Yeshua, he grieved Lazarus. But God, but God, it's okay, but don't stay in there. Depression is gone right now. Depression can't stay in your household. I lost my uncle Cliff this year. I lost my best friend Nathan this year. But to be absent from the body, he's in the comforter. They are in the hands of the comforter. And it was their time and it was their day. And your time and day is coming too. We are not meant here to stay. The devil didn't have his way. God had his way. The devil had screamed and the devil had lost a long time ago. But God. You log down, you touch the screen, and you say, but God, the almighty, his hand, thank you, hallelujah. I give it to him. We haven't given up on him because we said we got to accept death. That is part of life. We trust you, Lord. We invite you into our household. We invite you into our souls. We invite you into our home. We invite you into that absent seat that asks the table. You are our Prince of Peace. You are our mercy. There is no other way. Any other way is sinking sin. Why do you think the other religions go ahead and celebrate Christmas? The Muslims, the Buddhists, all of them celebrating Christmas because it's a pagan holiday and they don't care because they know they're not defiling what they believe in by celebrating it. Oh, I'm sweating right now. Yeah, I'm in a fifth day of COVID and look at me, but God, I praise him. I lift his name on high. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You spared me to see my grandbaby. You spared me to see another day. You spared me to, 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 to worship on this Sabbath day with you. You spared me to use me in front of the people. What is she talking about? If you don't know, because it's either what? Destruction is either coming, going, or you're going near it. It's always there. God didn't say you would, you're not going to endure it. But he said he has the final say. Trust me. Are you trusting him? Repeat after me if you trust him and say, Yahshua, Yahweh, I lift your name on high. You sent your only begotten son. Worthy is the lamb. He died for me. I give it all to you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I believe that he died on that cross for me. I believe that he shed his blood and I believe that he's the bread of life. If you say that, if you confess with your mouth, that's the beginning. That's the beginning. But there's work to be done. There's work to be done. That contract agreement that the rabbi have been talking about, that's the work right there. The Torah, that's the work right there, studying to show yourself approved. There's work to be done. Spread the good news. The good news is that he hasn't forgotten us. The good news that we are from Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are living off the promises. The good news is that we're coming out of this. We're, we're making our exodus. The good news is we are his children. We are the original Jews. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We are the chosen one. The good news is that we have power. And if we believe, we're going to move mountains. Are you spreading the good news? The good news is you are kings and queens. You are priests and priestesses. That's the good news. Can't nobody give you that gift? You wanted your gift today? You got it. That's your gift. 
We love you, Lord. We lift your name on high. You're merciful, God. You're a healing God. You're an on time, God. You're an omnipresent, God. You're a God of help. You are a Prince of Peace. Hey, shit, hey, hey, thank you. Even the clouds beneath are dirty. You ain't nothing but a dirty rag. He doesn't need you to accomplish it. If you don't do it, he'll choose somebody else. But you are the chosen one. You are watching this right now. You are the chosen one. He chose you. You got to tap into it. So you came to see you so today. That's what you got. Play this on your play this at your dinner table today. Play this at your dinner table. Play this when you get a moment and get serious about it because it's a serious hour. As I scroll up and down, people are, are dropping dead. Picture of hell from, from, from these plagues. But it's that time, isn't it? I'm gonna play a little song. I know that was pretty intense, but I gotta give them praise. I had to let this out of my belly today. It was building up. I had to let it loose. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. If you can't do anything else, say hallelujah. 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 Thank you. I'm happy in my spirit today. I'm happy today is the Sabbath day where y'all get your Christmas down. I'm so, I'm so happy you're tuning in today. Hallelujah. Yahshua, Yahweh, the answer, the key. Whew. My body is on fire. He has saved us. He has risen. The resurrection had happened. Worthy is the lamb. He's preparing a place. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 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 thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to play a song real quick. Woo. Woo. I don't know if I'm done yet, but I'm going to play a song real quick. You are our give you glory because of who you are. See y'all here. She loud today. Yeah, I'm loud today. Turn your mic down. You don't want to hear it. I will live my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I worship you. Fingers, but I got a lot to think about. I got a lot to think about. And because of who you are. Thank you. Hallelujah. I give you hey, my hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Right. 
and praise worship when you when you're destitute and you can't even talk all you got to do is worship him all you got to do is say hallelujah because he hears your heart he knows what you think because the heart is very deceptive just say hallelujah if you can't do anything else just right now say hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah thank you lord Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shay, hey, hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's tarrying. That's that old school stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shay, hey, hey. You want to speak in tongue? That's all you got to keep doing to say, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. I'm going to turn it over. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this pagan holiday Christmas. We've gone on this several times. We know today's not Yahshua's birthday. We know that John the Baptist, uh, Yahshua was born six months later because Elizabeth and Mary, that was proving that it was six months. She was six months into it. So he was born six months after John the Baptist was born in March. We know that because his father was summoned. He was at some, um, uh, type of we'll call it convention i'm at living he was at a convention and he was called away and so when elizabeth was in labor so we know that will put yahshua lord jesus christ in what september okay which is the holiest jewish month of the year that's the new year our new year has already started so we're not going to entertain that we're not going to entertain that the United States is making billions of dollars right now off of this thing called Christmas. But then that brought that jolly old white Santa Claus and put a thing on them, St. Nick, because St. Nick, he this guy who did real good by people, he, he died December the 6th. So they just added him in there, right? So you can look these things up for yourself. And as I said before, during my prayer, that's why the atheists, the Muslims, the Buddhists, all of them, they celebrate Christmas because it doesn't defile who they are because they all know it's pagan. They all know it's a joke, okay? So it doesn't defile their religion, so they go ahead and celebrate it, right? And who are you giving the gift to? If it's his birthday, who you, what you giving other people gifts for, right? Uh, John 15 and 13 say, greater love has he no one than this. It's to lay his life down for the one that he loves in the one the life for one's his friend. That's the greatest gift you can ever give. And that's the one he gave us, Yahshua, who laid his life down for us. And if you can't acknowledge that, then you need to take a seat, for real. Okay, and so I'm gonna hand it over. Uh, everybody have an open mic. I know I've been over here giving praise. Uh, I'll, I'll give the mic to all the ministers. Thank you all for logging on. We ask that you share our episode. We ask that you uh, leave questions. Uh, God is good. I'm, I am in my fifth day of COVID, but as you can see, starting yesterday, I was fine. And so uh, continue to pray for me and, and pray for one another, okay, everybody? And um, the mics are, go ahead, and you have the floor. This is open mic, right? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I ain't getting away at Easter today. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. As the young folks used to say, cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 
I don't know who's going to start spitting first. <laughs> it's just a, a relaxing day. It's the day of the Shabbat. Uh, I want to say shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom. Um, I've been listening to the testimony of a quote, uh, Easter. She has a reason to be because in the midst of all this that's going on and, you know, being in, in the fifth day of this, uh, whatever it is, this attack, yeah, it lets you see the power of faith, how it works. Some people in their fifth day were in the hospital, right? A lot of them were worse than that. And again, with this variance and all these things going on, you know, just trust God, that's all. Just trust him, you know, and, uh, and believe that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. He will deliver on his promises, okay? He will deliver on his promises. So, you know, if anyone else wants to say anything right now, you, you, the mics are open, right? All the mics are open. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, parish hall, you know, if y'all want to share on that. But for me, this parish hall, if I must say so, is, is every year, you know, as we study it, I get a different uh, understanding of it. Or... It touches uh, a different area of our life of where we are today. And so today, when I was this week, well, actually this morning, actually I was reading over this morning and it hit my mind. You know, I was looking at Ankelos and I said, I'm going to teach out Ankelos today. I won't get very far, but I'm going to teach out Ankelos today because he gives a little uh, different interpretation of it. You know, of course, Ankelos, you don't know, he's a, a Roman convert okay he's a jew roman convert of the first century but for me again as i began to get into this thing uh unless again unless someone else says something else something they want to to say i would say that this parish all, a portion of it deals with eugenics as it pertains to the Israelite. Now, when you hear eugenics, you think about abortion and Margaret Sanger, and the clinics being in the African neighborhood or communities near the universities and colleges mm -hmm. where the young people are um, so that it could entice them to, into having abortions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we understand that, a, that, that the thing about eugenics is to destroy the life of the Israelite. I'm not saying black folks. I'm saying it is all the whole purpose of it is destroy the Israelites to keep them, keep the Israelite, the children of Israel from multiplying and gaining strength in society. That's this parashah. If you've studied and read this, this parashah, you will see that in the parashah. And, and without even reading the parish, you know, going into it, you know, it begins talking about the uh, the sons of Jacob that were there in 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 Mitzrayim, and how they finally died on, and the last one to pass on, according to the the book of Jasher uh, in the Sefer, was Levi. And it says that once Levi passed away, once he died, it was at, at that time when the new king was there that did not know Joseph, or was not intimate with Joseph, they began to make it hard, hard on the children of Israel. Not only that, but the wealth that the children of Israel had, their homes, they confiscated their homes and uh -huh. things of that nature from the children of Israel. And again, as it goes on, it says they began to, they told the midwives, right, to kill the male children. Right. Or mm -hmm. abort them, right? And they refused to do it. Since they didn't do it, he said, okay. He gave order to the people, the Egyptians, to kill the children, the boys, not the girls, but the boys, right? right? The male. And they went through drowning the male children. That's eugenics. That's 
form another form of abortion. Okay, mm-hmm. it's a way of controlling the population of the children of Israel. That's happening today. It's happening because they're killing our young men and young women. Uh, like this young man just they just got off for murder. This teenager. Uh-huh. And they celebrate him on program. They sell he's a rock star. Uh-huh. And and he, you know, he's free. He killed, you know, killed people, murdered. He murdered. He didn't kill. He murdered oh, and got wow. off. Uh-huh. And he's celebrated because he is doing the bidding of the adversary. In other words, destroy the children of Israel. Anyone that does that is celebrated. If you look at what's going on with the uh, you know, back with Trayvon Martin, when the, you know, a child, that's abortion, that's eugenics. It all plays into the same game. And it is history repeating itself. So I'm telling everyone here t- today, keep your eyes and continue to watch. And I know you already are. And you see that things are escalating because the, remember the, the, the prophetical word has gone forward. The 400 years has been accomplished. And if you, when you're studying this parish, y'all, see, they came out 400 years. They came out of it later on. It's not, it's after this parish, y'all, when Moshe goes through, you know. But we're in that time period. We're moving toward that day when we're to, to leave. Mm-hmm. So let me, does anyone have anything they want to say right now? Inter- interject? Any thoughts? I was just going to say that the parasha for the week was um, Exodus 1 through 6 was yes. the parasha. And the new parasha is Exodus 6 through 9 up to the 35th uh, verse. So mm-hmm. next week, Exodus 6 through 9 up to the 35th verse. Yes. Thank you, Rabbi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and all I was going to say real quick, Rabbi, is, um, and I think that you're already alluding to this, but this plan is so much bigger than one people one culture or one time this plan has been carried out over time and so when folks say you know um you know it's the white man or it's this or it's that I always try to correct that because it's so much bigger than that satan has been working since the beginning of time and he may be working uh mostly through one mostly through a, a certain culture at this time but all through all time this plan has been unfolding all through all time this attack has been attack has been upon us so it's time to see bigger than just like this current American context. Yes, there is something to see here, but you also have to see the bigger plan unfolding and how it's unfolded over Rome and over Babylon and over all these different cultures. And the same ancient attack is still happening today. That's right. Same right. script, di- different cast. It, it, it's like we have a new type of Molech. Yeah. A new way of... T- Putting the kids into the fire by with the even with the with as far as like with the pill and the mm-hmm. and the abortion clinics like like you said it yeah. was all about destroying the offspring. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is. And, and and another thing about that is I read a couple a day or so ago. I think it was in India, where I, I guess the Buddhists or wherever they are in India were talking about annihilating. The Muslims that are in their country, eradicating them. Wow. Yeah, and I I never heard of, of anything of the Buddhists doing something like that. Mm. And now they're talking about it. I mean, that lets you know that this is a spiritual thing, right? Now understand this also: the Muslims call upon Allah. Mm-hmm. Now this is gonna mess a lot of people up. They call upon Allah because they, we've been told that well, that's a false god. But when you read your scripture, what does it say in the beginning? Allah in. If you take the suffix off, it's what? Allah. Bereshibara Allah in. Or Bereshibara Allah. Allah. So we have to be very careful and understand that this thing is very deep, as Minister Griff said. This is very deep because everyone that is going to God. You see, we've been politicizing to think that all Muslims are evil and that they want to destroy Israel, but that is not the case. There is an evil element that operates from the opposite side, and his job is to kill, steal, and to destroy. And he does that by attrition 
and separation. Uh -huh. Whereas those that are truly following God or going to God, or as we may say, Yasar Al, going to God, they're the ones that are being attacked. So if you're truly following the way or have a true desire to follow the creator of all, creator of all things, understand that the attack is coming to your doorstep. Oh. Coming to you. And we have to be aware that we are not um, exempt from the, the destruction in the world. We're protected, but it's going to come after you. You will be attacked. And many righteous have been killed uh -huh. in this because it's warfare. But their life in the flesh may have gone, but their life in the spiritual realm goes on, as a quote, at least Esther said earlier. They're gone, but they're still alive. Uh -huh. Okay. So we have to understand that this is a warfare and it is against everyone who will call upon the name of our father. Uh -huh. Everyone. I, 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 I was, that makes me remember this, this verse in John. And it said, uh, if the world hurts, hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. that's right. See, again, it began well long ago, right? see that light in the, and that the thing in the cosmos in the in, in in the war in heavens if it said the war was in heaven and they were thrust out that tells you that it didn't start here on the earth uh -huh. this is an ancient battle from before the creation of the world because there was one that wanted to rule on high in place of the creator uh -huh. and his purpose is to give and, and and you know you have to understand spiritual things for that. His whole purpose is to bring balance to the creation during the time that we are being perfected. You understand what I'm saying? His purpose is to aid us in our perfection. That might be hard to understand. Why would there be an adversary created in order to aid us in our perfection? Because if you didn't have a choice to make. How, you know, when, how would you really understand? You see, our father, that's why the, the Torah was created and, and the laws and the statutes so that we could understand the difference between our side and that side. Because in the spiritual realm, actually in the spiritual realm, and I, I might be getting a little bit deeper into this thing, but there is no hate. Just like there's no up or down, just like there's no time in the spiritual realm. Uh -huh. All these things, these these evils and 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 opposites are created for us to create a balance in the universe. See, and we have to understand that there's a choice. You know, this in this creation, when he said to the man, "Don't do something," he gave me. He says, "Because this is how we're going to balance is by giving us the ability to choose." And I say all this to get right back to the point of, in this eugenics, when they put abortion clinics in your community, it's there to perfect you. Why? Because you have a choice to make. You can go in or you can walk by. If we were children, if we were to obey the commandment, we would understand that those, that portion of that clinic would shut down. They would no longer offer abortion because nobody's doing it. Uh -huh. Only offer it the market for it and the market is for those that don't understand why they were created in the earth okay you see so it is our duty to educate people so they can choose you know it's just like a drug house in the community you know i grew up and and, and there were drug houses not in you know I, you know i knew where they were People would walk by them every day. In, in Houston, right here in Houston, you walk by drug houses every day, you know. Um, I remember being in, in you know, uh, in Kingwood, there were drug houses in Kingwood. You know, it's supposed to be a, a, prom, a prominent neighborhood. Everywhere you go, there are drug houses. There are places of, of or places of ill repute that are there. Uh -huh. Do you go there or do you drive by? It's a choice. Uh -huh. 
So it perfects us when we choose properly. And how do you know how to choose properly? Because it has been written and put in a volume of a book, what you know, what you should do and what you how to serve the father. This parish is about that. Do you know that in this thing that we're in called the diaspora or the captivity, it is for a specific time frame. And at the appointed time, we are to be gathered out of this place by Mashiach into the land of Israel. Do you know that in this parish hall, in the book of Jasher, um, I guess probably chapter 75, talks about how some of Ephraim, the Ephraimites, left Mitzrayim before their time. And they were defeated, all except for 10 of them. Because they left before they were supposed to leave and they went, you know, going back to Israel before the time. There is a time, there is, is given to us. And if you read the scripture, it says, Messiah is going to send forth the angels into the, uh, into the diaspora, into all the world, and gather in the children of Israel into the land of Israel. Children of Israel into the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. But it's at a specific time. Right. So what happened in the 60s when the Demo people from Demona went, they went before their time and they were not accepted into the land of Israel. And into this day, they're still being deported from it. And they serve in the, in, the, in the IDF and still get deported because they're not supposed to be there until Mashiach comes. I want to go there. I would love to be there, but it is not time yet. Mm -hmm. So all, and this, and this is in the parish that, that King James took out. So you won't know this. All right. He took the book of Joshua out. So you wouldn't know this. That's why you have to get your sefer. Yeah. That's why you need to get that sefer because it tells you things that are not there. It talks about the son, Mashiach, uh -huh. you know, by name. And the King James Bible, but it's in this Bible, in the, in the sefer. If you know where it's there. You see, and so it's important for us to understand why situations are as they are. You know, during the plagues, they died because they didn't obey the commandment. During the plague, they doesn't say that in the King James, but that actually happened. And we talked about that last year during this parish hall. This is a review. But it, so if you don't obey, and and uh, Cole, uh, Easter, you said the you know uh, previously you said that there. These uh, people are, are worshiping this this pagan day. For the children of Israel, it means something different. If if the for the goyim that don't know God, it's okay for them to do that. But when you are a child of Israel, it is not okay for you to do it. Mm -hmm. Understand that. It's not even okay for us to to condone it. We're not even supposed to condone it. We're supposed to correct it. At best, not even say anything about it, just don't acknowledge. Mm -hmm. When, you know, when people, I was at the uh, uh, VA the other day and they would, Merry Christmas, and I said, I don't do that, you know. I, I don't do this, you know, that's not what I do. There was a, 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 PS, a PA assistant there that said, a physician assistant said, I don't do that either. She said, I'm a, I'm a Buddhist. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't do that. Said, okay. But, but you know, the people, but those that know me wouldn't say that, but those that didn't know me would say it. I said, well, I just don't, I don't do that. You know, I'm not a part of that. Count me with the Jews on that. <laughs> you know, we don't do that. And, you know, I, I think for those of us before we were enlightened, as far as, and speaking personally, when I first, I guess, came into the whole Christmas thing and everything, I just figured it was something that had been there since the beginning of time. Mm. Like for thousands of years that Christmas ex existed, you know, and, and it was practiced. And then it was like once I became older and started becoming more enlightened, then I found out that this was something that's like less than 200 years old in the U.S., and that when the early Puritan stuff came over, they forbid it because mm -hmm. they knew of its pagan roots. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until the late 1800s. That's what shocked me. I was like, wait a minute, the 1800s? 
1800. And that's when it became legal. And then Oklahoma was the very last state to even endorse it and make it legal. And that was like in 1907. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, wait a minute. We talking about the 20th century. <laughs> I'm like, this yeah. thing ain't been going on for thousands and thousands of, of years, you know. Uh-huh. I'm like, but been sold a bill yeah, good. And you know that Hosea 4 and 6? <laughs> hey. I can knowledge, you know, sort of like it's like if we would just read and study. Yeah. If we would read and study, we and know why it is that you're doing what you're doing. Not because mama did it and grandma did it, but find out the, the roots of something, a lot of people would change a lot of stuff from what they're doing because that's what it was for me. Yeah. And you and you know, brother Mike, uh earlier you were saying how um how abortion is just modern day Molech worship, how it's just literally putting the baby into the fire. And I would ask this question, Rabbi, is, you know, we look at uh, the Old Testament, we see the Asheroth poles. Mm. I don't know if I'm saying that that word correctly, but uh, we see we see the worship there and we see that we shouldn't take down the tree. Is this not the same thing? Is this not just continuing this these century old traditions of Asheroth worship and worshiping these pagan gods in that way? It's the same thing, but the, 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 you know, it's the same thing. And we, we, you know, the teaching against it has been going on mm-hmm. for a long time. Okay. In my lifetime, I know the teaching was going on. And before me, it was being taught because my mother told me, so that means that tell me, you know, you're not supposed to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. And my aunts and, and, you know, that, that didn't do that. And, and so, yeah, it is a pat coming up and the prophet Jeremiah talks about it. Right. Mm-hmm. That was the thing that like just blew me when I saw it right there in black and white in Jeremiah 10. Black and, white. and it said, don't do as the Gentiles. They get this evergreen tree. They, they cut, cut it down. The they <laughs> nail it to the thing so it won't fall over. They adorn it with silver and gold ornaments. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jeremiah 10 and 3. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. It, it says it, it says it started, like, verbatim. That for centuries. Yeah. And millennial, the evergreen tree was a thing of worship. Pagan worship. You because know, it was considered the male phallic and the wreath was considered the female vagina. And uh-huh. I was like, okay, well, uh-huh. wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I'm like, how is Yeshua tied to this? What, what have you got to do with this evergreen tree? But it's like sometimes when, when you, we just don't ask questions, we just do because this is what has always been done. Yeah. That evergreen tree, that Asher pole that he's talking well, as, about. <laughs> as, as Rabbi saying, people have been preaching this too, and um, not not to try to tarnish the, the Martin Luther King's name or anything, but Martin Luther King's father, who which they all had an opportunity to lead our people because we know they were one of the greatest leaders. His mother was killed because a Hebrew Israelite wanted him to go ahead and preach the truth. And he came to kill Martin Luther King's father. Martin Luther King's father wasn't there. So that Hebrew Israelite killed the mother, his Martin Luther King's mother, and another pastor. So they were trying then, back then, to tell the people, tell them the truth. Tell them who they are. Tell them these are your people in the Bible. Like I said, I'm not trying to tarnish the name, but this is, you can't erase history. All this was going on back then. Yeah. And so as we try now to... Uh, tell the, the, the pastors to, the, to preach it. I mean, as the rabbi say, choose you this day. Either you're going to do it or not. You know the truth. If you refuse to preach it, then it's, it's, it's a false prophet. It is what it is. And so God is ciphering through things. He, that's why the, the churches are being shut down. There's things going on right now. The, yeah. the gifts are over there in the water. They can't even get them here quick enough. If man won't do it, God don't need us to do it. He'll do it himself. He'll shut it down himself. I said, I can't get vindication from these doctors on what they did to me. God is doing it himself. They scared to go to work. Yeah. They're, they're right now. They're, they're so tired. They're, they're frail. They're quitting after they didn't uh, killed us, uh, raped us. They didn't done all kinds of things. Now they're tired. Well, guess what? We've been tired. Yeah. We've been tired. Enough is enough, and God is doing it himself. That's why I say, just get in a position. You don't have to do anything. He'll do it. Yeah. Because I used to think in my mind, like, God, how, how long is this 
this they the little black ball, their little pagan place gonna be where they the, the doctors they they won't get exposed. Not, but he's doing it now. Yeah, he's bringing his he's bringing his vengeance down on now right now on them. Yeah, you've yeah, been raping yeah. my people. You you've been doing this to my women. You've been using them as a guinea pig. Be gone. Yeah, be gone. It all ties to eugenics. It goes back to the same thing. Destroy the children of Israel. I'm not saying black folk. Notice I didn't say black folk. Right. I said destroy the children of Israel. Yeah. All that going it, it, to it God. said rigor. That yeah. they the ones to with, rigor put, right. put it on us. He used that word rig like hard labor hard. on them to let them know I'm bringing this hammer down on you. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I, th I think about the the whole use, like you, like we were talking about the whole birth control thing with the uh -huh. by abortion, and, and even with the pill. I know so many women, especially melanin women, that was on the pill, and maybe they had a child, and then they got on the pill, or maybe they didn't have a child, was on the pill, then after they got off the pill, so they could have a child, they was having all these fibroid tumors and everything, yeah. didn't have to have a hysterectomy. Yeah, yeah. So now no children, period. Right. After that. And that, that I'm one of them. I ain't yeah. gonna sit here and lie. I'm one of them. Try every birth control I could use uh, not to have a kid because I, I didn't have a husband. I was left with the one. But why keep making the same mistake? Yeah. That's why I gotta preach it because I lived it. I've done yeah. it. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Some of that is our fault, but the majority of it comes from the trauma of the war that we were in. Trauma. Yeah. You know, you know what? I, I, I watch this. Watch this bomb here. You know, you, we talk about how the women were raped and all that stuff. Brothers was raped too. Right. <laughs> they yeah. were raping men. Mm -hmm. Them, them, them priests loved them little boys. Right. You hear me? The priests would get the little boys, but them slave masters would get the strongest man and and yeah. break him in mm -hmm. front of everybody else, sodomize him. You know. And now, you know, they're going to pay the price for that, for what they've done. And so that's what causes a lot of the trauma that in our communities, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, it's a psychological, it's a spiritual, we call it psychological, psychology, but it's actually spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not psychology, it's spiritual. And that's where that gay demon come from, because a lot of our ancestors were raped. That's right. And, and That's where it comes It is. From. It's a generational curse. And the only way you're going to be able to do when you recognize it is pray and, and lead them to the Bible to abstain yeah. until they can yeah. deal with it. And one of their good breeding grounds is in the prison system. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can perpetuate it in the prison system. Right. Mm -hmm. It's prevalent. And they love that. They want that because they, if you got men don't want men, guess what? You're not going to have a birth rate. Mm. Right, you're not and going same to thing with the so, women's prison. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yep. you know, uh, once we, once and, we and came, by the once way, once we came out of slavery, then they say, okay, we're going to put them in the prison. Yeah, yeah. We'll a new slavery. Right. We'll have them work there, making plates and making yeah. different things in the prison. Yeah, and and another thing is, since, since we're still disobeying the Torah, we cannot break the spell that we're under. Remember last week I said that they weaponized the gospel? It's been weaponized. Uh -huh. Well, one of the things that they use to weaponize it is their pagan holidays, right? Yeah. That's a part of the weaponry, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and you got these people that are bound in it, and the leadership is continuing leading. And, and it's a spiritual thing because they're, as we call charismatic, mm -hmm. it's a spiritual leader that's leading them, derogatory, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, make this confession. I got relatives that are in ministry that are hollering Christmas. It hurts me, you know? It hurts because they know better. Uh -huh. But there's stock, again, I heard somebody say it's Stockholm Syndrome. Yes, it is Stockholm Syndrome. And they def then they're fighting. If you say something, they get offended because you're speaking against this day. Oh, this is Christ's birthday. And then you go into the book of Luke and you find out, oh my goodness, it's wrong. But they still... Oh, that's that's okay. It's still, but, you know. I, I always, I've always wondered because I, I've had a conversation with someone before, and they were talking about how a lot of the ministers know, but they don't want to tell the truth. And I figure some of them don't want to get out, but yes, they don't want to tell the truth because if they tell the truth, they're gonna lose members. If they lose members, they're gonna lose ties and money. 
you know, but my thing is if God called you to this, he going to sustain you. And I, I was like, I had to kind of like take my hats off a little to, uh, over at uh, Windsor Village, you know, mm -hmm. when I found out they were doing Feast of Tabernacles and yeah. Pass, I was like, what the world? A Methodist yeah. church, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was like, and it was like a thing, because I think it was my sister, I had a couple sisters that was going, and they were like saying, he had a meeting one day, and he said, we no longer going to be doing this, and then he told them why. And I think for some, if you not just tell them why, but break it down in more easier tone where it can be digested. And instead of just saying it's this, 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 no, but give them reason to show like a little history, how it got to where it's easier to uh, chew and digest. Just like when you chew a piece of steak, you're not just going to give them a whole big old and hand the whole steak to them in their mouth. You're going to dissect it, cut a little piece, and then you're going to eat it. Yeah. And then when I saw the part where I think it was uh, Pope uh, Julius, he actually picks the uh, December 25th in an effort to absorb and yeah. adopt the traditions of the pagan. I'm like, yeah. but we never were taught this. Yeah. And and you know, and you know, brother, and you know, brother Mike, and a lot of my teachers I do on this, I like to pull like the history.com references oh, and the uh, encyclopedic references to show like you don't have to go far to see that this thing right. has pagan roots. Anywhere you look, it'll tell you that this comes out of the winter uh equinox right. and that this is all about the the moon and you know and the, the length of days and all this stuff and it's been and so it's not like a hidden information but going back to what you said about uh these pastors one thing that i i, I get hung up on is you know when i walk into a church and i see a christmas tree Go and on. i'm just like I know that you had like I, I came across this early in my studies. I haven't gone to I haven't gone to uh, uh, school for a master's in theology or a doctorate in theology. Seminary and stuff. Uh, you had to have come across this verse. And what happened? In, what happened in your spiritual formation when you came? Were you like ah I see it? You know it shouldn't happen, but no, nah, I'm gonna keep doing it. You know it's just like I just always I, wonder I, what I happened. Think one of the arguments is that it's been said that in that Jeremiah ten verse that they were not referring to the actual Christian. They were talking about making an actual wooden idol. That's, yeah, yeah. That was one of the explanations <laughs> I kind of heard. But I'm like, when, they, say anything. When, when you look at it, I mean, it's like, it's almost like re, re, when you're reading Isaiah 53 and Isaiah 61, there's no way you can't look and say, oh, this is Yeshua. I've yeah. seen so many documentaries when they've been in Israel because that's a verse that's kept out and nothing. And when they hear about it, when they read it, they say, oh, that's like the, the one you're sure. Not realizing that it's right out of the, the, the Tanakh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, brother, sometimes people make me mad when they say something. I just want to slap them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with no excuse like that to me. I don't want to. right. Wanna, he, he, ain't, he ain't done with us yet. <laughs> God's not finished. <laughs> oh, when they say I pimp slapped them. <laughs> with the black of the hand yeah yeah don't forget that baby powder on there put that baby powder on that slap yeah. Yeah, yeah that don't make no sense uh, you know uh, really don't make no sense. i think some people they'll use whatever they want to justify to do what it is that they're doing and and, and why no matter how yeah. wrong it is yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and it, and it in this day and age, you got all this, all this knowledge. Anything you say, you can go online and find somebody to co-sign it for you. Yeah. And so it's gotten even worse in this age of information where you got so much stuff that, you know, you can find anything to try to back you up. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know for, for the common person that sits on the pew, I don't get angry with them. Mm -hmm. But for the ministers, you know, those that call themselves pastors, apostles, and, and bishops, and those are the ones I get angry with. Mm -hmm. they're the blind shepherds they are the blind and the scripture talks about the blind shepherds you see those are ones that anger me because they know better if they went to seminary they went through uh old testament 101 and it talks about keep the sabbath day and they debated over that so they know uh -huh. And they know the when they get into the part uh, 102, when they get into prophecy 101 and stuff like that, they know the prophets and what they said and who they were. They know. So they know better. And they know the history of the, you, you get into the history of the church and they know about the history of the Catholic church and, and all the other different churches. They know it. So they have no excuse. Uh -huh. 
and they say God does not change. Well, if he doesn't change, <laughs> oh my goodness. Here you go. I want to slap him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knock the devil out of him. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, so one of the things that I always kind of like wonder was because of our early church fathers uh, were very, very anti-Semitic and they stripped pretty much Christianity from its Hebraic roots. It seemed only it would stand to reason that when they get into seminary and theology, it's going to be tailor made to that type of thinking. Yeah. So that it would not embrace the Hebraic side. So if they and to keep from it even in being embraced, then it, that's going to be weeded out or tailored out or made very less than. Yeah. So so, I, so then I, 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 so then I, I have to ask then how far away is this Western theology? Because if you are stripping Christianity of its Hebraic roots, then you're stripping Yeshua of a lot of what he said and what he came to fulfill. And so is there that begs the question of is there any truth in these in this in this Western form of Christianity? Because you're stripping the foundations of it. If it's, if, it, if the foundations are gone, then what else is there? I'll say about the Catholic Church. If the root is bad, then how can we trust anything that came from the root, which is every branch of Christianity comes from the Catholic the, the Catholic root. And so it's like, man, if you're stripping it of that deep, then what can we take from it? Yeah. Well, what happens is you put the truth in there, but you make it give it no effect, no power. Yeah. They have a form of God. That's what it means by having a form oh, of God, oh, but denying the power yeah. thereof. So it's mixed with truth, okay? Mm -hmm. But they dilute that truth and make it powerless. Right. Well, one of the things that um, I always get concerned about when we, in these type of discussions is the, 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 the next extension of the leap is that Christianity is bad in and of itself, which is not true. You know, when Satan came to Jesus, Yeshua, he, he quoted the Bible. But Jesus said, so Jesus, it's the totality of the scriptures that you're supposed to understand and look at. You know, the fact that you have, because that's an objection that a lot of people have with Christians. Well, you do this and you do that. And you know, this is not right. And, and it's a true statement. But at the same time, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So the question is, is the Bible accurate in it what it says, or are there other books that may uh, shed more light, but the Bible itself is still accurate, you know, and, and you can look at, I mean, there's, there, you know what I mean, you can look at, like, when, when I grew up, they didn't call out all of the, they didn't pay attention to, well, how, how should I say it? Well, my understanding wasn't centered on the Jewish feasts and holidays, but it's still in the Bible. It's still but, but you know, and, and that's the thing, like what you just said, we were kind of like taught that it was Jewish feast, and it's not. When you look <laughs> in, Christian in the feast. scripture, it says nowhere in there that it's Jewish feast days. It yeah. said that it was God's days. Yeah. Well, not Jewish. Well, Don't I even say Hebrew. I think it's like what, 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 what Minister Mike said earlier. When you was on baby food, you was on baby food. But when you get steak, it, it's time to go ahead and eat the steak. Um, when you were small, you used to tuck your shoestrings in your shoes until you what was learn how to tie. Yeah, it is what it is. At some yeah. point, I was on baby food. Now I'm into the light. Once you're into the light, and you know the truth. You can't go back. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And if you are, that's that's where that choose you this day. That's that lukewarm. I'm gonna spew you out my mouth. Scripture. Yeah. It, it, yeah. But I think I think what Jerry's saying though has some validity of. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of times we, first of all, Christianity is not a white man's religion. It started in Africa, right? Like the first churches are in Africa. And so we think about Christianity, we think about it. I think about it in terms of the thing that enslaved us, the thing that helped enslave us, all these other things. But, you know, you have to get back to the roots of it. And we get radical means to get to the roots. We get radical about the, the topic. Uh, it is in its inception and what, and what Paul was doing with it and what, uh, Peter was doing with it like it was a valid 
uh, form of worship. Now, what we have today is it seems to be invalid because of all of the stuff that's mixed in with the truth. But I, I hear what you're saying, Jerry, and like, don't throw the baby out the bathwater right. in right. that there is a there is a good root somewhere. Yeah, We're just yeah. so far from it here in the, in the Western world. When, when you look at Ephesians 1, 1 and 18, it says, enlighten the eyes of your understanding. So all of the stuff that we were brought up on uh, with the scripture and stuff, that gave us foundation. But we have to build on, on that also, because even if you just have the King James Bible, the feast days are still there. Mm -hmm. And it still says from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. None of that changed. And, 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 and changed and, and, it, right. but it I, didn't I change in with, the word. I agree with Jerry. Don't, don't throw the... the Right, Maybe right. That's what the end. It's important to know. It's important to know that Christianity, the Bible, is not it Christianity. It was something basis for us to start. Oh, it was something that gave us foundation. Than nothing. Right, definitely, it gave us yeah. foundation. So, you know, one, one, one of the things that I conclude is that you know, when I think about faith and when I think about, uh, you know, be, be, believing in the Lord uh, Jesus Yeshua, you know, um, one of the things I've concluded is that. I, I, it's going to sound the wrong way, but sometimes the simple thing is the best and simply having faith, you know, we got to obey the word of God and everything, but I'm saying that sometimes it's, I don't want to say ignorance is bliss, but sometimes if you keep it simple, it, you know, for, for the masses, maybe that, that it is better uh, in a sense, because for instance, what I'm trying to say is this. You know, we all hated that we were slaves, our ancestors were slaves and that type of thing. But one of the benefits is that we're in a place, not, you know, however you look at it, that is, you know, it's like, where would you rather be right now? And I, I, I get it, the, the rabbi and his wife just came back from Africa and it's beautiful over there. I, I've been to the Northern coast, but I'm saying, but the thing is the benefit for me is I grew up new in the Lord. That's the benefit for me. Not saying I had to be here to do that because I'm glad I wasn't born in Saudi Arabia because I, I imagine I would have been a Muslim or whatever. But, you know, so I'm like, there's some, I, I think that what I'm trying to say is that the anti element or aspect of things can be overwhelming and we don't keep it simple. A the large, a, a large, a big percentage of African-Americans believe in Yeshua. Yeah, but you have to understand that before the Europeans came to the continent of Africa, if you go to Kamasi in Ghana, there was a, an, <clears throat> excuse me, there is, um, <clears throat> there are Hebrews there that right. have been there for 3,000 years. If you go to uh, Nigeria and Sierra Leone, there are communities there. They call them Jews now, but they were there. They were Torah keepers. So Christianity, the Roman, the, the Europeans did not take salvation to the continent of Africa. It was already there when they got there. They did pollute it and they did weaponize what they had. Again, it's Christianity. And they beat it into them. But there's a root that is still there that never converted to Christianity, but it's always kept Torah. They're still there and have been there. So when we when you think about and keeping it simple, this in the simplest form, if the Europeans had stayed out of Africa, the continent of Africa, it would have been much better off than it is today. Mm -hmm. Had they stayed out, because we were there. And we were a powerful people. And, it, and they had to use us to defeat us, because they couldn't do it. So where would I rather be? I would rather be on the continent of Africa waiting for Messiah to come to take me back in Israel, right. not in the United States, because in the United States, I'm still not a fully free person. I have certain freedoms and certain rights and appearance of, but in the actuality, when I go to the court system, I go to the banking system, when I go to the educational system, I find when I'm in corporate America, I find out that I don't have the same rights as my white and other peoples do. Amen. And Amen. I realize that and I acknowledge that because I know what true freedom is. I grew up knowing what true freedom was. And I knew the difference all my life, you see. So I could not say that it's better here than, it, than there. But no. what, I, what, yeah, what I'm saying is, 
I'm I'm not talking about the social social aspects of it. I'm talking mm-hmm. about me learning about the Lord. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And so, and so yeah. So, so saying, if you had been there, you still would have learned more about him. You would have known the feast. You would have known circumcision on the continent of Africa. Right. Right. You would have known that right. before coming here, right. without coming here. And I would, and my children would have seen businesses. My son would have yeah. seen a business owned that they were actually making the, they had the, the, the uh, cloth and they were yeah. making it and that all of it came from them. Yeah, metalwork, artisan, Everything. farming, all of that they stole. Came from our from people. Country. Yeah. Instead of us always there. having to buy and have a thumb on us every single every single yeah. time we want to start a business or having it burned down. Yeah. So, and so it is yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. And, and 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 I love you, husband, but maybe you're comfortable over here, <laughs> but some of us have never been comfortable in our yeah. spirit. Yeah. Even though God has given yeah. us, he's been good to us over here, we've yeah. never been comfortable. Because we know there's always been more. I've, I've never, I've always felt like it, it was like a wall. What's, what's on the other side of the wall? What's on the, I've always felt that since I've been yeah. small. Yeah. Well, and I'm you know, learning now, what's on the other side of the wall? I guess one of the things for me personally, I've never felt limited because I, I've always believed that if I believe in God, in Philippians 4.19, it says all things are possible. So if that's a true statement, and I believe it is, then I'm not limited. Society does place um, these artificial limitations on you. But I've always believed, and I will always believe, that if God decides something for my life, then then nothing in no place, in no location, no system can prevent me from having it. I, I just, I fully believe that. I have, and I will always believe that. So yeah, you 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 can say you know. I'm glad you do because there is limitations here. Yeah. Let me let me deeper. give you an, let me limit, give you an experience. There's I give you one of my life experience, life experience <clears throat> in corporate America. Put it <clears throat> in corporate America. <clears throat> uh, coming up through the rank, whenever I go to a company, I would go in at the bottom. You know, even though I had skills, you know, I had the education background. Sometimes I would go in, I would go in for supervisor manager, apply for management positions, and they would see me, wouldn't even talk to me. Or they would offer me something like a lower job, but they'd give it to someone else. Many times when I would hire onto the company, at the bottom, I would get elevated because I would do the job and not say much. And the people that work around me would enjoy working with me most of the time. And when I get elevated and I begin to exercise the authority of, with equity with the people. And one of the biggest thing I found was when they would allow me to run a meeting and they would find that I, <clears throat> I could influence people through my speech. And it's because of the anointing. God do that. He gave me the anointing that I could persuade people when I talked to them because, and they didn't expect it from me, uh, the other people. But when they found out, I've heard them say that, you better watch out because he's gonna take your job in upper manager positions. And then the ball would start turning to stop me from being elevated because one of the things that was in my philosophy was everyone is treated with dignity and respect and deserves the opportunity to show how good they are and that they can do good. There's another side that says, we don't want that. We want people that are gonna play ball and operate within our system, the good old boys system. Uh-huh. And they would begin the, the, the wheel would turn to move me out. Right. That's in so, the oil and gas industry. Yeah, I and I'll say, I'll say it like this. In every person's life, you, there's, you, you spoke earlier about a balance, a counterbalance. Mm-hmm. There's always an obstruction put in your place, put in front of you to overcome. You look at Joseph, okay? He, he, God had showed him in the dream that he was going to be over his brothers. So what did they do? They sold him into slavery. So mm-hmm. it's like, they're in, okay, let's, let's, I mean, you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Or you, or you, like you say, you go back before 
go like to the the the, the war in the heavens. There's always a there, well. Someone says like this: Well, there's a there's a positive. There's always a negative. There's a, there's in the law of thermodynamics. There's a, the, a, there's always a opposite and equal force, but it's not equal in this case because there's nothing equal to God. But the point is that you you will always whether it's personal, whether it's whatever. There's always a requirement to trust and have faith in God. And you, we are always going to be obstructed. And I, there was a scripture in the Bible I didn't understand for the longest time. And I think I have a little bit better understanding. When the Bible says, Satan has blinded the hearts and minds of men. There are people that will come against you that don't even know why they're coming against That's you. That's right. That's true. Okay. But because it's a spiritual, you know, Paul says we wrestle mm -hmm. not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. So my point is this. Anytime we take it down to the physical, we're, we've already lost in my opinion. Okay, so so you have to, well, think about it this way. If you, the way that the society in this country is set up is if you can influence people, you are a threat if you are an Israelite. Um, they're, 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 it's, 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 they killed Malcolm X. They killed Martin Luther King. They uh, and many others, Marcus Garvey, all those that were powerful people, they either killed them or they banished them from the country because their 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 potential to bring the people together to operate as one. So they had to, and this is spiritual, by the way. As long as you are not a threat you can rise to the top. But when they realize that you are a threat, in other words, you're going to shake the foundations of their evil kingdom, you're either going to die or you're going to be kicked out if they can't kick the legs away from under you. That's a reality because you can read the history of it all the way back to Joseph, you know, all the way back. You know, Rabbi, there's, there's people that say it's not a physical, but it really is because yeah. they're complacent in this Egypt. And just like when Moses was bringing them out, you had people saying the Lord was had manna coming from the sky. He was mm -hmm. feeding them. They had everything they need, but they said, well, I don't have any spices like I had over there in captivity. <laughs> we, we had some sugar and we, we had some extra herbs. There's always going to be some that's, that's still going to complain that wanted to stay over there in that Egypt. Yeah. And you can talk to you blue in the, in the face. And they have master's degrees and they have all kinds of stuff, but the the the, the uh, military and different people have given them that Stockholm syndrome that they're never coming out of. And they gonna wanna stay. Let them stay. Cause that's yeah. where the Bible say, kiss, kick the dust off your feet and you keep it moving. You know, we the are, we, let me finish. We are here to give the good news. And the good news is you are a Hebrew Israelite. The good news is, well, you don't have to suffer in this Egypt forever. The good news is we're going back to Israel. That's the good news. We are his chosen people. And yeah. if you can't fit in those shoes, then just don't wear them. Because I'm going to wear mine. Yeah. The rabbi's going to wear his. And there's other people going to wear theirs. And we're ready. You know, the good news in, in biblical days was and and is that Yeshua lives. The good news when he walked the earth was the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is. Are at you end. spreading it? Are you spreading it? See, so so that is the, actually the good news. And everything see the the everything physical starts in the spiritual, right? I'm not playing with these demons today. I'm not gonna play with them today. No, anyway, already, you know, I'm on something else. He he's already been saved. I'm, he, I, I'll he, leave it at that. He, 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 <laughs> because I, you know, even with, and and I'm I'm trying to hold back. You've been in that that industry 18 years, and you want to be at a certain place, and you haven't gotten there. So don't tell me what they won't do to you. I know. I pr I'm the one who be praying for you. Quit playing with me today. We're not gonna do that. And it's because of your skin. Mm. It's All because right. of who you are. 
and you got a master's degree. You've earned it righteously. Yeah. yeah. Don't tell me what he won't do to you. I've watched him. I'm gonna pray that you get a dealership, brother. Uh, you can you can have your own dealership. 18 years in the Ooh. industry. You know what? We're gonna pray to prayer prosperity that you do get it. You want a dealership, brother? Jerry, you want a yeah. dealership? We'll pray for you to get a deal. You want a dealership? I think you you should have one. Well, I just really I just want the Lord's will to be done. Mm, okay, that's that you have a dealership then. That's so you can okay. have a dealership because you can it can help more people with a dealership. Sure. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody who chooses to get on here, I welcome yeah. you in. Yeah. I welcome you in, mm -hmm. and everybody, uh, we respect everybody's opinion and, and what they're saying. But we come to give the good news, mm -hmm. and, and it is what it is. And we're moving forward, and we treading down the wicked. We shutting down that Stockholm syndrome. Mm -hmm. We leaving that behind. Mm -hmm. You either gonna catch up or you gonna fall behind because things are moving forward right now. God is moving forward with some things. Yeah. He's plowing over. And when you plow and you don't look back, you, you go forward. We're not going back. We didn't went back too many times. Yeah. We have to operate as a people. You know what? I wanna say something before you, you move on. Talking about how they, the, the the Israelites were saying they had fish and all this stuff while they were in it, in, in uh, Mitzrayim, they forgot that all that stuff was confiscated, and they were the hard bondage. <laughs> they forgot all that stuff. Forgot about that, you know. Right. Okay. You know, and, and and so we have to remember that the, what we're doing today is nothing new, right? <laughs> and, and the debate that we have today here, this in in love that we have today, is the same debate that they had then. Because mm -hmm. there were four groups of them then. And one of them wanted to just work, operate within the system. One wanted to fight. One wanted to run. And one just said, well, let's just live. And they were debating on that. But guess what? In the end, all of them were saved. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Thank you. So Hallelujah. we may debate all we want to. But in the end, we're all, all of Israel shall mm -hmm. be saved. All you know, of Israel. You know, you know what? I think, I think for me, you know, I'll break it down like this, Rabbi. Uh-huh. The focus for me has to be, in my mind, always the Lord. Yeah. And so when I don't see that, or when I sense it's something else, then alarm bells go off in my head. Mm -hmm. How, however you paint the picture, however you want to describe it, the focus when I get to heaven is not going to be that I have X number of A, Y, B, C, D, and E. It is, did I tell people about the Lord Jesus? Did I, you know, live according, did I do God's plan? And so that's my only point. That's my larger point. The focus to me, if it's not the Lord himself, then to me, something is amiss. Yeah. Because I think, I think that all of the scriptures point towards Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, the Messiah, and the, the redemptive plan of God. That to me is the whole point of the Bible. You, you know what? And, and the, and the Sefer says that now in the, to knock, you don't see it exactly like you just said it. But in the, in the Sefer, you'll find it says those that believe on his son. Uh -huh. It actually says that. And you say it, and I agree, and we all agree, is that if you don't believe on the son, uh -huh. and that is an agreement with what is in the scrolls. Uh -huh. You see? So you, you see, brother, that's why I say all of Israel will be saved because all of Israel is looking for and proclaiming the son Yeshua or Jesus whatever you want to call him you know if you want to say Jesus that's fine if you want to say Yeshua if you want to say Isa as long as you're talking about the son of God who is coming as Mashiach Ben Dawood then you're in good hands you're in good company right, right. so you know it's good to have good debate because like, we can see it from different aspects mm -hmm. and we wound up in the end in agreement right you know that you realize that because he just and, some, and, brother, and brother end, Jerry summed it up. He said, to, "I'm going to preach." It's all pointing to him, right? Yeah. In the end, yeah. it's all pointing to him to give him the glory because we're nothing yeah. without him. So, and, yeah. and these things are nothing. He gives us everything that we have anyway. Yeah. So that's how you win the debate. Do you believe or don't you? Mm -hmm. Right. That's how right. that ends the debate. Do you believe? Right. Right. That's the question. So we have to agree. And the answer. Yeah.
That sums yes. it up. So, so you, that you threw us a curveball, brother. You had to quit doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did try pitching when I was younger. Yeah, I was. I wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any closing um, statements, uh, uh, Rabbi? Uh, do you want to go ahead and sum up the parashah before we close? Well, we yeah, the parashah is some. It's eugenics. We're you know we're getting ready to come out of this this bondage that we're in. We're waiting for the Mashiach. My generation may not make it into the promised land, but the generations coming behind us will. We understand mm -hmm. that. We must stand diligently against killing and avoiding our children. We must stand together as a people, understand where we're going, who we are, and whose we are. Okay? Uh, as we say, Rebono Shal uh, Olam, the master of the universe is our father, and he is in control of everything. Right? So let's just trust him. This parasha reminds us that we are only here specific, for a specific time. And we must stay the course <clears throat> no matter what is thrown at us. Because mm -hmm. with signs and wonders, we are leaving this place. Amen. Amen. Does anyone want to volunteer for the closing prayer? Brother Jerry, would you like to volunteer for the closing prayer today? Sure. Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua, Esau, uh, Ben David, son of Ben, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, you created us for a purpose. You created us for your will, to do your will. Help us to see your will, to do your will, to execute your plan. Give us the courage, the motivation, and the determination to see your plan through and to go against all obstacles. Perceive or not perceive, Father. You said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. You said all things are possible them that believe. You said all things work together for those who are called according to your purpose. For your will is supreme. We ask that your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. We ask that all of our family members be covered in the blood of your son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and all our households and all our descendants. These things we pray and we ask in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for the beautiful prayer, my dear husband. We thank you all for tuning on. We thank you for the healing that has taken place. We thank you uh, that you're going to share this episode and that you're going to leave a comment and that you're going to uh, send me your email address so you can join us. Um, we thank you that you're going to be safe this evening. We thank you that you've gotten a gift from the Lord, which no one ever can give you, which is a peace, a sound mind, that healing take place, and that he uh, takes away your depression and your loneliness and any anxiety that you may have. We rebuke all of that. God is God of clarity. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. We lift his name on high. He's our Prince of Peace. We love him. We look to the east for which cometh our help. He is our strength when we are weak. He is our patient when we, when he said, be anxious for nothing. We are the prime. We will get the prime. We won't get the crumbs under the table. He loves us. We worship you, Lord. We put nobody else before you, our Yahweh. We ask that you keep each family this week as we come into an, another year for the secular. We know we've already started ours, but the secular one that people won't drink and they won't be hurt. We ask that you lead us and guide us and you shut the bars down come New Year. We know that we put it all in your hand. You know the hairs on our head. You know the numbers of the days we're supposed to be here and can't no devil in hell stop it. We love you, Lord. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday and we love you all. We come to you in peace and harmony and love. Nothing more than that. Next Saturday. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. 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 Shalom.